Messiah, and he is the one that will establish the kingdom. But you did not accept him, so you have to suffer the consequences. This is a past test. Some people say, how long are you going to be preaching about the last days? <laughs> now, it's been the last days for the last 2,000 years, for crying out loud. Uh, but you see, Protestant denominations are mainly apocalyptical uh, denominations, meaning that they are the ones that are preaching about the doomsday and the final days of judgment and all of that nice stuff that we like to throw out of our pulpits at the poor people. You're going to burn. And you're going to hell. And that's true. And that's what we're supposed to be preaching. I mean, we don't have to present the sugar-coated gospel. Now, there is a bad news. Without bad news, there is no good news. If every news is good news, it's no news. You know? It's like, yeah, I went to work today. So what? But I got into a horrible accident, my car is totaled, I walked, but I still went to work. You know, that's a good news. It is. In a way. <laughs> yeah. You said that the Jews didn't really concern themselves with the future as far as, they didn't care what happened to you on the grave, they just cared for, for the present and the blessing. So if they weren't concerned about the, what happened after death, they, they won't believe in hell and hell? And Some of them did. When Jesus Some appeared of them and did. started telling them that they would go to hell all of a sudden, why didn't you warn them about, about that like 3,000 years before? See, David gives us some clues uh, into his beliefs. He says that I know that you won't keep me in hell forever, and that hell is, of course, uh, what word in Hebrew? Sheol. Which doesn't mean hell as a place of punishment, it's just uh, afterlife. And uh, according to some commentators, they say that Jews believe that when you die, you just go into deep sleep, and that's it. Um, you might have an understanding of a spiritual being being aware of itself. But as far as Painting again a physical body and walking this world, they didn't have that understanding. You see, for the Gentiles, new body was an important message because according to the Greco-Roman philosophy, the material body in which we are living right now is bad because it's deteriorating, it's uh, susceptible to diseases, to death, to injuries, and so on and so forth. New body is a uh, completely different material which is much superior and you can't hurt us, you can't kill us, you can't make us sick. We cannot sin in the new body. So for, for Gentiles, the concept of a new body, the flesh, was very important. For Jewish people, they believe that there is uh, Abraham's bosom. 
somewhere where all the Jews in the spirit go and they're basically in the presence of all the saints of the Old Testament. Although Jesus, when, when he tells the parable about Lazarus, he says that the Lazarus was at among the people who stood When uh, there was something I wanted to ask in relation to this, uh -huh. because you said without bad news there is no good news. Uh -huh. Well, if they didn't believe and tell, what was the bad news for them, and why did they keep salvation? <laughs> well, the bad news was that they thought of themselves as good people and righteous. And that they were pleasant in the eyes of God when in fact they were sinners. And uh, as Jesus called the religious leaders tombs that have been basically painted over. You know, there's a stench on the inside, but then yet on the outside there are just brand new looking tombs. Uh, the bad news for them was that they are not going to be in Abraham's bosom if they don't believe in the son. Or if they are just born and claim that their father is Abraham. Right? Uh, they have to actually do something else to deserve to be in the The purpose of Israel on earth was to be a witness of God and to bring other people, Gentiles, into the fellowship with God. They failed miserably because instead of bringing other people to God, they were going out and adopting all these other people's ways of living, which completely destroyed their witness and testimony. Okay, so, uh, on the other hand, we're talking about afterlife. There were some ideas about the afterlife, but they're very primitive. They're not as well developed as the one that Jesus comes and tells about. So some of them were thinking that it's deep sleep. Others were thinking, well, maybe in the spirit we can fellowship. But none of them was thinking that there will be in the fellowship with God. God is an invisible being that could not be understood or seen, could be heard from, but not seen. And remember, in the, in the Old Testament, we, we see a lot of people wanting to see God, but he says, well, you hide behind this mountain here, and once my glory passes, not me, but my glory passes, you might take a glimpse of it, of my glory. And when Jesus is transfigured on the Mount of Transfiguration, they cannot look at him because he's so bright. So they can't, they cannot make up the features of Jesus behind him. It's just a bright light, that's all. And it usually fall, forces people to fall down. Same thing with Paul. He can't see God. So, and here, we are actually getting a new idea that Jesus is the representative of God. He is God. You can see him, you can touch him, you can talk to him. In fact, in heaven, he will be there with you. And you will be the son of God as well, through Jesus, or daughter of God. Okay? So, of course, it's not a full answer to your question. And maybe you can look up in the dictionary of uh, Jesus in the Gospels something about the Jewish concept of the afterlife. It will give you a little more in-depth answer as far as that goes. Okay. Death and dying. Any other questions? Yes. When, when David lost his son uh -huh. as a result of his sin, what, what was his concept of afterlife? Because didn't he believe that he would see his son again one day? I, I'm not clear on what passage. He said, I will go, go to him. He will not come. I will go to him, but he will not come to me. Yeah, which says basically that I will die and I will be joined with my forefathers. That's an expression of being buried, buried in a family tomb. Hmm. Or I will go to him, he will be buried in the same grave where his okay. son is buried. So you can take it very literally according to the Jewish traditions and customs. Okay. And 
and you can take it figuratively, meaning in heaven. That's why there are so many misunderstandings when we just uh, automatically assume that we understand what the Bible says without thinking it from a different perspective. What does that really mean? Deep sleep. Like Paul says, uh, for this sin many of you are asleep. It doesn't mean that there was a, a bunch of people sleeping during the Lord's Supper. They were dead. In fact, death uh, in the New Testament is the most severe form of punishment, as well as in the Old Testament. The physical death is the most severe form of punishment. It's not the loss of salvation, it's physical death. Some Christians who are saved are dying, and that is a punishment from God. Not all Christians that are dying are punished by God, but some, they're taken away from birth. You know, like, when parents are seeing that their <coughs> children are best misbehaving, what do they usually do? How? <laughs> you are in your house, you're washing dishes, <laughs> and you see your kid fighting with a neighboring kid. What do you do physically? What do you do? What do you do? From the moment when you see them, what do you do? You get out of the house, you go and grab your kid, and what do you do with him? You bring him into the house, right? crying out loud. I want the detailed steps. <laughs> That's what God does. He takes you home and then he punishes you. He tells you what you've done wrong. And he takes away your negative influence on others from this world. So that's what they mean by I've heard statements that evil that God will take you from the earth before you write your own life. Yes. Before you ruin yourself. Yeah. Although some people just keep on living. He <laughs> 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 could do God's job, right? <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of people that are trying to do God's job, you know, usually on medication or out of it. <laughs> Salvation in man. With this. Question. We probably will be here until uh, 6 a.m. <laughs> yes. Salvation in Matthew. Uh, deliverance from sin as a response of the people to John the Baptist. Uh, not deliverance form of sin. Deliverance from sin. Sorry. That's the fault of my computer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, even I make mistakes sometimes. <laughs> but in this instance, that's a good I thought you would have a different excuse if you testify. Jesus' blood is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. And then there is an ironic statement made by the Jewish leaders at the crucifixion. They say, He saved others couldn't save himself. So they are actually, although ironically stating what he was doing, they're actually telling the truth that he saved others. And this is the picture of that. Okay, I'm back. No, actually, you're doing the right thing because your brain uh, remembers more if you actually write it out with your pen or pencil. Because brain learns by touch as well and by repeating the patterns. When I was teaching the 